Welcome to this video that goes through exercise 7e of the AS textbook for Edexcel Year 1 Maths. Um, in this question we'll go through various proof questions from uh, these exercises. So the first question we've got is prove that when n is an integer and 1, uh, n is between 1 and 6 inclusive, then n equals n plus 2 is not divisible by 10. So for this one, it wants us to prove, and as given in the hint, it wants us to prove every integer between uh, 1 and 6, including 1 and 6. So what we can do is we could do a little table of n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we're given that m is equal to n plus 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 8 plus 2 is 8. And we can say that m is not divisible by 10, so none of these integers are divisible by 10. And so therefore you have proven, proven the statement. Again, you don't need to write this out specifically in the exam. Um, you can just write that the initial sentiment is fine. Um, and that is your answer for question number one. For question two, prove that every odd integer between 2 and 26 is either prime or the product of two primes. So the first thing is, is we've got every odd integer between 2 and 26. So that's going to be 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23 and 25. Um, so it's either prime or the product of two prime numbers. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write down all the prime numbers. Um, so the, all the prime numbers we have, remember the definition of a prime number is a number that is divisible by itself and also by one and they're the only factors of it. So the only factors, so it has two factors um, which is one and itself. So that rules out one as a as a prime number because that is only one. It doesn't it doesn't have two separate factors. So the first prime number is two, um, and then the next one so it'd be two, three, five, seven, nine is divisible by three. So that's eleven. This next one thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty one is divisible by three, twenty three is not, and twenty five is. So of all the prime numbers from our list, we can rule out uh, 3, uh, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. And then it says it's the product of two prime numbers. So here the product of two prime numbers, we've got 9. Well, 9 is the product of 3 times 3. So they're both prime numbers. So we rule that one out. Uh, we've got 15, which is the product of 5 times 3. So we ruled that one out because they're both prime numbers. And we've got 21, which is the product of 7 and 3. So we ruled that one out. And then finally, we've got 25, which is going to be 5 and 5. Uh, so, and we ruled that one out. So therefore, we have gone through and proven for every number of the integer between 2 and 26 that it's either the product of two primes um, or is a prime number itself. Question three, prove that the sum of two consecutive square numbers between one squared to eight squared um, is an odd number. So here the consecutive square numbers, uh, so from one squared, uh, so we want the sum of it, so we're going to add them together. So it's going to be one squared plus two squared, which is equal to one plus four, which is equal to five. Then the next step, so it's two squared plus three squared, which is equal to four plus nine, which is equal to thirteen. And then... 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 9 plus 16, which is 25. And 4 squared plus 5 squared is equal to 16 plus 25, which is, again is going to be an odd number, um, which is 41. And we continue, so it's 5 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to 25 plus 36. Again, you're adding an odd and an even number together, so therefore you're always getting an odd number. This one is 61. 6 squared plus 7 squared is equal to uh, 36 plus 49, which again is giving you an odd number of 85. And 7 squared plus 8 squared 
is equal to 49 plus 64, which is equal to 113. And we can see that these are all odd numbers. Uh, so therefore, we have proven our statement that to the sum of two consecutive square numbers between 1 squared to 8 squared is an odd number. Question 4. Prove that all cube numbers are either a multiple of 9 or 1 more or 1 less than a multiple of 9. So, all cube numbers. Um, so, we're going to have... Um, it's either a multiple of 9 or 1 more or 1 less than a multiple of 9. So for every cube number, we it's the power of 3. So that's going to be something like x cubed. And so here, what I would probably do is pick a 3 integers, essentially. So I'm going to pick um, something in the 3 times. So I'm going to pick 3n. And then I'm going to pick 3n plus 1. And then I'm going to sum 3n plus 2. And the reason why I'm going to pick that one is because of the cubic, uh, the power of 3. Um, and in the case where we have 3, if anything divided by 3, we'll have either 3n, will either be 3n plus 1 or 3n plus 2. And if you think about it, we've got 1, 2, 3. Or four, five. So let's do pick four, five, uh, three, four, five as an example of three consecutive numbers. Three is three n. Three n plus one is four, and three n plus two is five. And if we had n equals zero, then zero, one, two, three, three times zero is zero. Three times one is three n. So zero plus one is one, and zero plus two is two. So you can pick any three numbers here. And we're going to use this because we're then going to take this to the power of three. So we're going to pick three n cubed which is equal to 9, uh, not 9, sorry, is going to equal to 3 cubed n cubed, which is equal to 27 n cubed, which is equal to 9 n, or, well, actually, no, we're going to need to take our factor of 9 here. So it's going to be 9 3 n cubed. So we've proven that this one is a multiple of 9. Then the next one we've got is 3 n plus 1 cubed. So that's equal to um, 3n, so 3n plus 1, 3n plus 1 uh, is equal to, 3 times 3 is 20, is, not 27, sorry, is equal to 9n squared plus 3n plus 3n is 6n plus 1, and then that's going to be, multiply that by 3n plus 1, so we're going to get 3 times 9 is 27n cubed, and then we're going to have, uh, so it'll be 27n cubed, and then plus 9n squared, plus 18n squared from 6n times 3n, plus 6n, plus 3n, plus 1, so that becomes 20n cubed, putting together 9 and 18 is going to be 27n squared, put together 6 and 3 is 9n, plus 1. And then from here, what we can see is we can see, well, we can factor 9 out of these, out of the first three ones. So we get 9, 3n cubed, plus 3n squared, plus n. And then we get a plus 1. And that gives us our multiple 1 more than 9. So it's 1 more than a multiple of 9 because we know that this section here is a multiple of 9. And then the plus 1 adds it on, so it's a multiple of 9 plus 1. And the last one we have is 3n plus 2 cubed. Um, so this one, again, if you know the binomial theorem, this is much faster to do than expanding it out. So 3n plus 2, 3n plus 2, and 3n plus 2. Uh, so 3 times 3 is 9n cubed, and then 3n is 6n plus 6n plus 4, which is 3n plus 2, so that's going to be 9n cubed plus 12n plus 4 times 3n plus 2. Then from here, we then expand again, so it's going to be 9n cubed times 3, which is 27, uh, not, sorry, I said cubed, this should be squared, apologies, so this is 27n squared, n cubed now, um, 
we got this. Apologies. So it's 27 n cubed. Then 9 n squared times 2 is 18 n squared. Uh, 12 n times 3 n is 36 n squared. Uh, plus 24 n plus 12 n plus 8. And putting together like terms, so we get 27 n cubed. And then we've got 18 times plus 36, which is 54 n squared. Then we have 36 n plus 8. Uh, and then from here, we're going to um, take out a factor of 9. So it's going to be take out a factor of 9 for the first one. We get 9, 3n cubed plus 6n squared plus um, that's 36, sorry. So plus 4n plus 8. Um, notice though that we can, if we wanted to, we can add 1 onto here to take it to 9, as long as we subtract 1 as well. So now we get 9, 3n cubed plus 6n squared plus 4n. This becomes 9, so then we can plug it into our bracket. So essentially it becomes plus 9 minus 1, and then that plus 9 can go in the bracket. So we can take out our factor, which puts plus 1, minus 1. And this here is a multiple of 9 minus 1. And that's how you can prove it. You can leave it as 9 plus 8, but you might not see the plus 8 as minus 1 from 9 for whatever reason. So this is another way that you can prove it on top. And from there, you've proven for every cube number there is a multiple of 9, uh, or one more, or one less than a multiple of 9. Again, the next number you'll get is a, is a factor of 3, which will be uh, 3n plus 3, or cubed, and this will give you a multiple of 9 in your answer. And that gives you your answer for question 4. So again, the way to do it is if you've got a cubic number, then always do three numbers, which are multiples of 3. So 3n, 3n plus 1, 3n plus 2. Well, not multiples of 3, but sort of three consecutive numbers, um, and use that to prove any of your solutions. Question five, if find a counter example to, dis uh, to disprove any of the following statements. So this one is an easy question to get in the exam, but the issue is time here. You want to try and find the quickest way of finding a, a counter example. So if n is a positive integer, then n to the power of four minus n is divisible by four. So you're trying to say that the proof is it's divisible by 4. So from here, um, we could do, so if we do n equals 1, that's going to be, uh, if n is positive into n to power, so it's 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. Um, 0 is divisible by 4, because it's equal to 0, so I wouldn't use this one. Uh, we could do n equals 2, so 2 to the power of 4 minus 2. Uh, 2 to the power of 4 minus 2 is equal to 14, and this is not divisible by 4. So I would be a bit uh, sceptical of using 0 as a proof, but um, we could definitely use the second one, n equals 2, as proof that it's not divisible by 4. Uh, again, you can find any example that works, um, but you see, so for example, you could do n equals 3 as the next one, um, but the first couple for this one is quite straightforward, and you get our answer. Um, B, integers always have an even number of factors. Um, so, for example, um, an even number, so 1 is actually straight away an example because that only has one factor, which is odd. So you've already found a counterexample here. Um, 2 is 2 and 1, 3 is 3 and 1, 4 is 4, 1, 2, 2, in 4, 1, 2. So that has got uh, 1 4 and 2, so this one also is 3 factors as well. So essentially, actually what, hap actually what ends up having is that any square number has an odd number of factors. Um, but we feel here that we've already got two counterexamples here. Part C, uh, 2n squared minus 6n plus 1 is positive for all values of n. And again, we can find this one quite straightforward because we can just do 2, 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1, and we get an answer of, so if we put n equals 1, 2n squared minus 6n plus 1 is 2 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to minus 3. So therefore, um, proven not true, because you get an answer of minus 3. 
And then the last one we've got is 2n squared minus 2n minus 4 is a multiple of 3 for all integer values of n. So 2n squared minus 2n minus 4. So again, we can plug in n equals 1. So 2 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 4. And we get straight away uh, that is equal to minus 4. So therefore, you have proven uh, not true by finding a... Um, yeah, straightforward round. So all integer values of n, positive values of n, it doesn't matter. Integer 1 is an integer, we've proven it straight away. Again, any other value that you've proven can be used to work, but try and find easy examples such as n equals 1 if possible. That brings to the end of these questions. If you have any further questions, please let me know.